Hey, I'm the Calphone Gamer. Welcome back to Draft Day Sports College Basketball. This is episode number nine. Uh, we are in our off season. Last time we only got through with a single recruit. We did not add any the second time around. Nobody was interested. Therefore, we have a number of open scholarships still, and we have one shot remaining at getting some of those, and that's the transfer portal. To make matters worse, one of our own players has decided to go into the transfer portal. That is Quentin McIntosh. And this is a new reason that I haven't seen previously. He does not like his teammates. Now, McIntosh, not a big loss. Uh, he's a forward, sophomore, one and a half star out of two star. Not much quality there. He's an okay outside shooter. Uh, he can make free throws, and he's athletic. That's about it. And that does bring us into the transfer portal. It's session number one. This is going to be a four week process and we have lots to offer. So we are definitely going to make a pretty hefty effort at this one and hope that we can bring in another player or two at least. Otherwise, we're looking at a team largely made up of walk ons this coming season, which is going to be a bit of a challenge if, if that's the case. Now, one thing I noticed uh, recently was that I, I had mentioned I think last episode that it felt like we were making more progress we were getting through more to the players on a regular basis and uh, we were seeing dynamic uh, ratings through the season I no longer think that that's the case uh, for one thing, you have a lot of tabs here. You have a lot of tabs across the top. And I thought dashboard was the same as your office. Turns out it's not. It's not. This is my office. And this is where I have my sliders for my philosophies, where I have my basics about my uh, average ambition, how I'm very high on academics, average on discipline, very low on temper, very high on integrity, and I have a total unknown reputation. These ones are all locked in. This one is variable throughout the series, but I am now technically entering season two. So this, which was showing ones across the board everywhere, has now become varied. It's no longer just static ones right down the middle, and just a couple weeks ago, it was just a solid one right down the middle, meaning it only changes as you start the new season. So let's take a look at our spider web and see where we fit into this thing in the diagram. This is out of 100. We're definitely not good yet, but we're not at ones anymore. So uh, let's start on offensive skills. We are a three in offensive skills. We went plus two. Hopefully that is the lowest, though it looks like scouting might be a bit of an issue as well. Player development. A4. A little more progress there, at least. Scouting is still a 1. Ouch on that part. Still a 1 on scouting. Let's go around the other side to defensive skills. A4. Okay, so a 3, a couple 4s. And that was still a 1, right? <laughs> that was still a 1? Yes, that ugly mess. Okay, recruiting I can already see is the highest. But how high is it? We put a lot of effort into the recruiting and it's paying off. It's a six. Okay, six is not good. It is not good. But it's five points higher. It's 600% better than what we had. I'll take it. It's a start. Year number two, as an independent, it's still going to be a rough year. Believe me, it's still going to be a rough year. But we can expect to see the first hint, the first sign of something. Uh goal for the new season appears to be the same as last which is don't finish last i think that's a little easier now because instead of being in conference v if you didn't catch it at the end of the last episode we actually did there is relegation from conference v we are now in independent not even in any conference first four last four of each conference move up or down there are 22 conferences but there are some additional teams that are independent, that are not in any conference, which means there won't be a conference tournament amongst the independents, but the top four teams among the independents at the end of the year 
presumably in their regular their record for the entirety of the season those top four will get promoted back up into conference fee and with fewer teams to go head to head with that should be a little bit easier but i still don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because the team is only going to get worse until i get better which we are but we're not good our highest attribute is now a six we've got a ways to go yet before we're gonna solidly make strides hello hello here is the beautiful wonderful amazing news there are just six independents three of them we recognize because they were with us in conference v last year along with us getting relegated you only have to beat two teams you only have to be better than two teams in order to get back up into conference v wow that's even that's easier our net ranking preseason at the moment is the highest of the six we were the highest of the four that have been relegated not saying a lot but something and this is the transfer portal there are some options this is fantastic for us there are some options we might actually be able to bring some players in now we didn't have much success when it came to that direct head-to-head -head get in there before you know so there is that we 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 don't necessarily have you know the the best skill set if you think about it as f you have four visits times four so that's 16 and then you have four visits times i think three the second time around that's 12 maybe it was another four that's 16 but either way you have about 28 to 32 visits firsthand tyson depina was the only one who was happy we had one that i think was neutral a couple times but then signed with somebody else so we had a couple neutrals and we had three happy responses that's five out of about 30 you know that's that's one out of six found any sort of success while our skills have not improved a lot i'm, I'm not expecting fireworks suddenly but this is a different game mechanic than the other one looking at the interest level most of the players in the transfer portal don't care one iota about us we're we are utter garbage in fact we're even an independent it doesn't even get worse than that we are the lowest of the lows i'm the lowest of the lows as a coach so for anybody to be interested it's like, it's like yeah all right uh we are the top five on one player of course it's a shooting guard but you know what i could not care less at this point i will take what i can get because it's it's going to be about developing skills so uh we can scout and contact 30 players this is going to start playing into the budget for the coming season and then we have four up to four scholarships to offer okay so recruiting transfers counts against your total budget scouting and contacting is 100 bucks scholarship offers is 500 that will dip into the money a bit but last season we had a similar financial situation as to what we have this season was it 35k total or was it 45k total we have 45k total this year we've already have had 5,000 extracted for our uh, scouting our west basic scouting that we did a year ago doing that again but we had plenty of money left at the end of the season we had a good 13 14 thousand left so uh, i think we can afford to spend a little bit on what is likely our best chance at getting players because you know we've had one all right uh, let, let's get into this so we want to scout and contact well really all of these guys uh top five choices we are number two number two on the list Let, let's offer the scholarship uh, do not hesitate do not hesitate not with that one anyway okay this one's a junior jeremy scott uh we know that he's really bad so 
so I don't necessarily want to offer him at the moment, but we will scout and contact each of these players that we are on their list for. That guy has a terrible GPA, by the way. This one, much better and younger. And he's from Idaho, so he's we are much closer to home for him. Uh, none of these guys really getting a ton of minutes. Just a shade under 10 per game is the highest, and three points per game. So none of them having done a whole lot at their teams. But uh, we don't know you know, how much better their teams are than, than what we are. I will hesitate on the scholarship offers at the moment, not knowing anything about the, the, the rest of them. So we will hesitate at least for a, a moment on on offering otherwise, and we'll certainly go for those who show up the highest. All right, first thing was Mr. Top 5, well, Mr. Second on his list, Landon O'Neill. We don't know anything about this player, but he will come to play for us. He has accepted our scholarship. That's one spot filled. We have three to go, and look at that. We have a success. The list of players that have already transferred week one, it's fairly short. It's fairly short. So there are plenty of options left, left but our, our list may be a little shorter at this point. Let's get into session number two. But before we do that, there is one important thing. It's not just about who the best players are, though, honestly, for our team, that is our best option early on is just get the best players we can get our hands on. However, there's still one thing that we need to look at. For that, we are looking at the roster. We are looking at the stars rating. The stars change. I, I've seen that the stars change. Uh, Lane Holcomb, our redshirt freshman at center, the one we redshirted. We had two freshman centers last year, if you remember. I opted to redshirt one of them, the one with higher potential. He is now seen as current three-star potential five-star. Wow. We'll, we'll take a deeper look at him later on, but there you go. Our weakest position a year ago suddenly appears to be our strongest Wade Dyer, sophomore point guard, looking to take over that position, still has potential as well. A small forward in Robert Lawrence, a senior. And then Rodney Wallace, now suddenly just two stars. Not the same player. And I told you, he didn't look as good as he was said to be. And maybe that's my poor scouting. Maybe I'm bad at evaluating in terms of stars, in terms of rating could be the case ernie singletary is now two star but he still has potential and then we fall off from there it looks like shooting guard is our weakest we have a redshirt freshman we have a senior the transfer and an o'neill okay so he's coming in as somebody who makes really good jumpers okay on his free throws but not much of a scorer Nobody on the team is much of a scorer, though the redshirt freshman Lane Holcomb might uh, be accumulating a lot of our points this season. Handles the ball fairly well compared to most of his teammates. Defense just a 19, but the team as a whole, I mean, look how poor we are. A 26, Holcomb, again, is our highest rated player. Blocking, stealing is up there compared to some others. Defensive intelligence... His IQ, athleticism, you know, he doesn't look half bad as a player. So that's that's pretty okay. Uh, he, he might be that starter at shooting guard this season. It's not going to be as good as we were a season ago in terms of some of the players here with some of those that graduated. But that's an okay player coming in, especially considering, you know, if you compare to Tyson DePina, who... Barely all that scouting suggests that, oh, actually, no, he was a one-star guy for a reason, at least according to this. Breakdown by position. We only have a single point guard. We have a few shooting guards, a couple small forwards, a couple power forwards, and a few centers. So we absolutely need to 
be hungry for a point guard. We need some help at that position. And then the 3-4 are going to be important to, to look for an additional player there as well. But honestly, we'll take whatever we can get outside of we definitely need to get a second point guard. Well, things did change in that short period of time. I'm suddenly down to just two players that we even make their top 10 list. We're up to fourth now for Peterson as we contacted him. So we did move up his list. Uh, we will both scout contact and let's go ahead and offer a scholarship. Both of these guys are shooting guards. Uh, you know, you can manually go in and change a player's position. At least you used to be able to and convert a shooting guard into being a point guard because we have three shooting guards whoever kind of fits the the bill will will get shifted over and we'll do that manually as we need to we're third on the list for Corey Moore and again I think we're in a situation where if we don't jump on the opportunity it's quite clear that it's going to be gone we made contact with all those guys and they're suddenly not interested these two we moved up the list therefore i think it's really important that we get after them otherwise there might not be anything left well even though i'm going after a couple shooting guards the main thing is i need a point guard so i'm i'm filtering down to just point guards and then what i'm looking at at the moment is what can i get what can i do what do I need? Well, I know I need a point guard, but what do I need besides that? Uh, looking at it, I only have, I don't know anything about these players and we're not gonna have long to really try to get after them and we're not on anybody's radar at the moment, but I know that I only have one decent scorer and then I have a lot of guys that just don't score very well. So I'm trying to get after players that maybe are gonna be able to score a little bit. So I filtered, uh, by points per game and I'm going to take the top of this list and make an offer to these guys or at least make an offer to the top one scout and contact uh, these top handful okay Corey Moore has accepted and will transfer to us that was one of the ones we went after Jojo Hollis Ooh, the, that's the 13 points per game guy that we just offered he has accepted and so is Colin Peterson. All three of them accepted. Now, the downside is that means I just went from... Uh, I, I, I went into a situation where I have a, a few too many guards. We will definitely have to shift, but not the other way that we were expecting. I now have two point guards, and I have five shooting guards. So I can move one of those to be another point guard, giving us three there. And then I can move one to small forward giving us three there, which means we have everything but power forward. We'll be at three, but that is all of our scholarships filled up in just a couple of weeks. Now there's gonna be a lot of bad players coming in, but at least there's players coming in and that has got to be a boost to that recruiting come next season when we get reevaluated, because ultimately we just brought in a whole bunch of players. We'll take a look at what we ended up with here momentarily. All right, so here's the player that I think was a bit of a steal for us. This was a huge addition. Jojo Hollis, I said we needed scoring and we needed a point guard. Outside shooting, 100. Great three-point shooter. Also, excellent free throw shooter at a 92. Ball handling is pretty good. Not a good passer for a point guard, unfortunately. But at least he's got the ball handling. Defensive ability, a 42. A 42 defensive ability. This is significantly higher than anybody else. He's got discipline, court IQ, athleticism. This is still not a great player. But with 32 for his scoring, this is probably going to be our player of the season coming up, I would think. And we've got him through transfer. Uh, the one downside to me uh, is floor range by percentage. He never goes to the post, which means he never actually fully drives the lane. He pulls up for mid-range 72% of the time. Outside shooting 28% of the time. And he's not good inside at all. So to an extent, I'm okay with that. But I'd much rather see guards that are inside-outside, not mid-range. 
I, I hate mid-range, personally. It's the lowest percentage shot in the game, and all the way up into the NBA, there's just a handful. Uh, you, can, you can honestly count on one hand excellent mid-range shooters for the entire NBA. Uh, Russell Westbrook is, is probably the top of the list on that one, and he is one of the most overvalued, overrated players in, in the NBA. And over the last couple of years, he's had some struggles because, you, you know, as a primarily mid-range shooter, you've got to be ridiculously good at it to be effective because it's a low percentage shot. So if you don't know the game terribly well, and I know, again, there's a good chunk of the audience that don't. So I, I feel like for those who really know their stuff, I, I, I maybe over explain things a little bit, but I, I know for those who are fairly new to basketball, it's tremendously helpful. So I swear it won't go on throughout the series, but for now, anyway, uh, I will on a regular basis. Here, here's the thing about inside outside. A two point shot is anything inside that three point arc, right? Foot on the three point arc is a two point shot. If you are at the rim, if you are dunking the ball, it's absurdly high percentage. If you are laying up as in your jumping and leaping and you're releasing the ball a few inches away from the backboard from the rim it's a very high percentage shot can it be blocked can it be a miss yes is it missed very often not too much the further away from the hoop you get the harder the shot is simple math on that right the physics of it close range easy you're only dealing with six inches or a foot or three feet. It's not hard. You have more room for error to convert. The further you get away, the tiniest little pinkies off and you get that pinky on the ball and you're redirecting that shot away from the target. So the target gets harder to hit the further away you are. Makes sense, right? But here's the thing, a three pointer you don't have to make as many of those in order for it to have value because it's risk reward. A three pointer is worth three points. You make two three pointers, you've now made the equivalent of three interior field goals, three two pointers. So if you shoot 50% from from the field and you shoot 40% from three sounds like two point field goals going to be better for you. But if you make 50%, that's out of, if we're, we're aiming for that six, right? What does it take to get six points? That's going to take six shots, right? 50%. You make three of them. That's going to add up to six points. So that took you six shots to get there. What about from three? To get six points, that means we need to make two. Two times three equals six, right? If you shoot 40%, which is a lower percentage than you shot from two point range, right? We're talking about 50% here, 40%. Two from five equals six risk reward you don't have to shoot as high of a percentage now if you are three inches further out from a mid-range or two feet further out from a mid-range the drop in percentage is only marginal you're one percent two percent lower than you were that couple feet further in and you can be ten percent lower outside than you are inside as a shooter and have better value, better return on that risk. I am an interior or three point range coach. I push, push, push that you're either getting inside for me, mid range, max range 
is elbows and in. Anything between elbows, so that last five feet, that last five feet around the perimeter, the interior of that, I constantly coach up players to stay out of that range. Do not shoot from there. Get inside, get the easy shot, get the high percentage shot, convert the easy layup, or get outside. You just need to have the ability to convert to make shots, but I don't like mid-range. All right, next player that we're going to take a quick look at here is Colin Peterson. Peterson, the one from Idaho that we're looking at, just a sophomore. High potential. One star out of three and a half. That looks pretty good. This, oh, 89% mid-range. Not a happy, not, not a big fan of that one, but 100% on his outside shooting. Free throws is passable. Discipline's there. Court IQ, athleticism, athleticism is there. This is somebody that will almost certainly get redshirted this season. And if he leaves us, he leaves us. At least we you know, filled the void and was able to recruit somebody. And Corey Moore is the other one we brought in. Also good outside shooter. Much better free throw shooter. Ball handling's okay. Good athleticism. Discipline court IQ are tolerable. And I've seen worse numbers when it comes to the rebounding, the shot blocking. You know, we've seen plenty of guys in the teens. He's at least got some low 20s in there. One and a half out of three stars. Junior, good GPA, so we don't have to worry about things there. Uh, this is somebody who will post up a little bit. Uh, Mid-range is there, but, you know, outside, he'll take 25% of his volume from there. And this is a catch-and-shoot kind of guy. 95% shoot versus 5% drive. So one out of four players had some quality. But... We we got four players in. That is huge. That is so, so massive. Overall, we brought five players in. Looks like we saw some good progress out of the freshmen that we redshirted. I'm, I'm happy with, with our results because all we had was Dapina, and Dapina coming in uh, doesn't look so good. He's a little bit better as an inside shooter, but he's not a great outside shooter. His ball handling is tolerable. He can draw fouls a little bit better than some others. But he's low. He's low across the board. I mean, we were just talking about how low 20s was definitely better than some. And you can see it right here. We have a few, a few attributes that are certainly okay and certainly better on a wider range of some things than some of these other guys. But... He is 10s to 16s in seven, seven attributes. And his proficiencies are insanely low. So this is a player that's going to need a lot of work, a lot of work, and apparently has no potential to develop. But we don't know if that's the case. Scouting-wise, it's clear that uh, I'm pretty bad at scouting. And my scouting still stayed at a one after last season, even though we spent a ton of time watching film. But one thing I didn't do a lot of was I didn't go scout live. I was saving that money. I need to go scout live a lot more often. It, it looks like watching film is not developing myself as a scout. I think I'm going to have to get out and watch these guys live because it's quite clear that Tyson DePina is the exact opposite of what we thought he would be as a player. I'm wondering if the other guy we brought in, Landon O'Neill, might be the best option to move uh, from shooting guard to point guard. The ball handling is fairly good. The passing is still one of the better ones on the team. Team's pretty poor at passing. And he's got good athleticism, and his court IQ is a little bit on the higher side. This could be a fit. I think it's a risky move taking a player who just transferred and redshirting them, but Colin Peterson as just a sophomore with an abundance of shooting guards, as it is, 
We've got Brent Gross, who's already redshirted. And then you've got Landon O'Neill and Corey Moore, who are definitely better than Colin Peterson. Depina, I've already selected to redshirt. I'm going to take the risk and redshirt Colin Peterson, which means I don't have to actually shift anybody away from shooting guard at this time. If he leaves us, he leaves us in terms of current quality right now. He's not going to see the court anyway. So uh, Colin Peterson is just really, really weak, really low discipline in court IQ. Yeah, this this is the right guy, the right move to make. I just it could be costly in that he might transfer away. But even with high potential, a our facilities pretty low. B as a coach, player development, my rating is a three, a four. It, it's quite low. We did see one success with Lane Holcomb. Holcomb definitely developed uh, over the off season, so he's he's looking good but that might be all we get. We might only get one player again. He redshirted, so maybe redshirting could be a boost. Did Gross also? I think he was a one-star guy last season. Now he's a one and a half, so maybe it's our redshirted players that have made the most progress. So Peterson, will will give it a shot. And with redshirting those two, I now have two point guards, three shooting guards, two small forwards, two power forwards, and three centers for the season to come, which means in terms of creating a death chart it won't be bad it won't be too hard to do also i'm into that phase where there's nothing left to do for me besides organize my depth chart playing time i'm not going to change tactically this season we will stick with the same idea except i'm going to take one thing and back off a little bit i did notice that with the weak players that i have and the low ability, which I love Jojo Hollis coming in with a 42 defense, but with, you know, low 20s being the high end of the bulk of the team and, you know, all the way down to an 11 for our walk-on. Look at that. I can see why we committed so many fouls. We are aggressive, but we're not good. So when you're aggressive but not good, that equals mistakes. That equals a lot of fouls. So I'm going to back off just a little bit. I still want to play an aggressive D, but I know and understand that a lot of our games came down to we committed way too many fouls throughout the course of the season. The funny thing is it's a lot easier to force the other team into making mistakes when you're keeping them under pressure, especially when they lack quality too. They don't handle the ball well. They don't pass well. You know, other teams are going to have similar ratings to us. Wow, I, I have plenty, plenty of time before I needed to redshirt players. But I didn't know this was coming. As we have moved forward beyond the summer, today is the first day where I could start recruiting. We're just getting going into activities. But I already redshirted my two guys for the season. And then natural off-season player progression happened. <laughs> yeah, now I have completely new ratings for the players. Rodney Wallace, right back to being the three-star guy. Right back to being our strong talent. Defensive ability is still not there, but he's much more balanced. And I've already redshirted him, and I can't un-redshirt but apparently I did not have a dud with Tyson DePina. I did scout him well, which is good. But I just redshirted the freshman, which, you know, it's okay if he doesn't transfer out on me. That's the worrying part. If he doesn't transfer out, this will be okay. But look at DePina now. The outside shooting's there. But all those 10s, 11s, 15s, all 20s now. The stealing jumped from like a 14 to a 30. The discipline went up from, I don't know, 35 to a 59. And now his potential, so much better. Apparently, I found myself a pretty good player 
and the one guy we were able to recruit in Tyson DePina. But he's going to have to sit out the season. That's okay. Landon O'Neill, Corey Moore are there. I was right that Colin Peterson, garbage. Colin Peterson, not looking good at all. Chris Morton, not looking good at all. Steven Jennings, who is our walk-on. That's what this is for. Uh, that's a new walk-on, by the way. That's an additional guy we just had. So Steven Jennings, through practice, has made the team as a walk-on. Uh, Ramaj is the senior walk-on who's been with the team for a while. But there you go. There's your reevaluation. Wade Dyer to back up JoJo Hollis for sure. Landon O'Neill, Corey Moore are going to get all the time at shooting guard this season, especially with Dapina sitting out disappointingly, but that's okay. It's okay as long as he doesn't just transfer out on us because, man, oh, man, uh, that sucks that we just lost him. But Robert Lawrence, Roddy Wallace to dominate. There's two positions. Jose McIntyre does look to be the top, top one, and Lane Holcomb. Yeah, this this whole, like, oh, wow, look at him, three-star. No. No, he's still the one-star, four-star player that he was a year ago. Um, apparently, we need to get through our practice evaluations, or I'm just... I, I think what is going on here is I am literally so bad at scouting. It's still a one, right? Everything else was a three, four, or six. Scouting is still a one for me. I am so bad at scouting that I don't have an accurate picture of my own players. I don't know how good they are. The funny thing is, in real life, that's the opposite. That's, uh, I, I was JV coach for a number of years, and the varsity coach, they, they got to pick their players, and then I got what was left. And I, I had a situation where two out of four years in a stretch, my JV team beat the varsity team in practice and scrimmage head to head two out of four years one out of the four years one of the other two years we got really close and there was only once where we just never never got close to where the varsity was in terms of capability in terms of that and that was just a team that was not athletic at all they played good defense when they weren't being beat for speed anyway. Uh, but the athleticism was so poor and the ball handling was so poor that they, they just struggled. It was beginners uh, that just weren't athletic and hadn't played other sports either. But that level of success that I had when I was JV coach, as varsity coach, I've only ever had probably two players that I selected for varsity that as the season went on, I was really disappointed in myself for selecting them over anybody else. Now in both of those players, uh, situations in both, they were the last player I picked. So I already knew, I already recognized that they weren't up to the level, but in both cases, I wish I had selected somebody else. But that came less down to what the skill set was at the time and more down to the coachability and teamwork of the player. And realizing that there was a couple JV players who would have developed much more significantly and would have contributed as teammates much more effectively two selfish players who were only about themselves who thought they were great when they weren't and just created lots of turnovers lots of missed shots lots of silly fouls you know those kind of things uh, and that's out of many years uh, as a varsity coach so and I've never had a JV co JV team while I've been varsity coach I've never had a JV team get anywhere near uh, that kind of quality to, to compete against us in, in scrimmage. So I'm, I'm actually good at evaluating players. It's funny to be the polar opposite here, but you know, we'll, we'll get there. 
All right. Well, you know what? I, I've been I've been talking for a while. It's pretty clear what the uh, depth chart's gonna shape shape up as now. Uh, I've also learned a very valuable lesson about waiting until the redshirt deadline to redshirt your players because the evaluations are going to change. The look is going to change. Is it going to continually change through the year? I don't know. I, th I feel like that's something that kind of locks in. I, I don't remember it changing last season at all. But here, it's totally different than what it was. Depina at the moment, though, looking pretty solid. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Got some work to do. I'm going to get into recruiting. Uh, I want to take a look at just one thing. One thing before we call this an episode. <laughs> There's your interested list. Two two-star players from Oregon and a couple handfuls of one-star players from around the country. Many from Oregon. That's another that's eight players from Oregon, which is probably a good chunk of the Oregon players, meaning there's five schools in the state. They're aware of us, but none of them are going, ooh, I want to go play for Olympic decathlon rings. They're just kind of like, oh, yeah, you exist, and you're in my state. <laughs> uh, but it's like they, they acknowledge our existence, and that's as far as we are. That's okay, though. That's okay. I'm a level six recruiter now. You better believe we're going to get that four-star rec No, no, we're not. We're not getting that four-star recruit, but we might be able to get a couple of recruits this year. Hey, we got transfers. That was big. I'll take it. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.